I made an entire ecosystem simulation and populated it with three habitats – deers, trees and coyotes. But it's not just a regular simulation. In order for each species to survive in this simulation, they have to adapt to the environment by passing their genes to the next generations and thus evolve. Or else… They will all die out. So the question is, will they be able to coexist and thrive in this ecosystem? Stick around to find it out. Now before moving to making the simulation, let me briefly explain how evolution works on an example of a predator-prey relationship between the cheetah and the gazelle. Cheetahs are known for their incredible speed, which they use to catch their prey. So for gazelles to survive in that environment, they have to be as fast as cheetahs. Over time, gazelles reproduce, introducing new generations, in which there are ones that are able to run fast and also ones that are slow. The slow ones are easy prey for cheetahs, so they quickly die out. The fast ones have more chances to survive and more time to reproduce and introduce new generation that has even faster offsprings. As the time passes, it becomes harder for cheetahs to catch gazelles, and now it's their turn to evolve their speed to survive. This constant back and forth evolution results in both species becoming faster and better adapted to their respective roles. Of course, the speed is only one factor out of many, so in our simulation we will create different genes for future generations. And which genes will they use to survive, we will find out only by running the simulation. To start off, I decided to create the actual environment in which they will live. Nothing too fancy here, I just made a new terrain with a couple of mountains and some lakes as water sources for the ecosystem. To make the environment more realistic, I added different objects like grass, rocks and mushrooms. And to finish up everything, I created a day and night cycle. This doesn't affect the ecosystem in any way, but I mean, who knows, we are making an evolving ecosystem. The environment is basically finished, but it's kinda empty, so it's time to introduce our first habitat. I started with modeling the actual deer and gave it very professional looking animations. After a bit of coding, we are ready to put the deers in our simulation to live. So let's have a look at the daily routine of the deer. I gave them hunger, thirst and specifically for males an urge to reproduce. This deer is thirsty now, so it will be looking for water to drink. It has a field of view and as soon as water appears in his sight, he detects it and moves towards it. I haven't added a food source yet, so it would be fair not to give them the sense of hunger either. But when it comes to reproducing, nothing can stop them. I tried to make it close to real life, so the reproduction only happens when the male feels the urge to mate, but the females can either accept or reject them. When the male offers to mate, the female will look at his characteristics and consent to reproduce. But if the male is too weak... Aww. Well, I said it's close to real life. So this female is pregnant now and after some time we will see her offspring, or with 25% chance, two offsprings. When a new deer is born, it has a 50-50 chance to inherit genes either from its father or mother. The genes are the stamina that decides how long the deer can run, the field of view and the running speed. On top of the inherited genes, the newborns also mutate by a maximum of 25% from the initial value, either becoming slightly stronger from their parents or weaker. But to get to that point, they have to grow up first. For now, the babies are small, which means all of their characteristics are underdeveloped and they are having hard time to search for food, water and flee from future predators. So only if they survive till adulthood, they will reach their maximum strength. I guess it's enough for now to torture the deers with no food. Let's introduce the second habitat. As the case with the deers, I started with making the model of a tree. The trees of course should also be able to reproduce, so I wrote a little function to handle the reproduction. First I gave them a minimum and maximum radius where a new tree can be spawned. The program then chooses a random position in that radius and checks if the new tree can be spawned there. If the new position happens to be on sand, or on a mountain, or there is another tree close to that, a new position will be chosen and a tree will spawn. Just like the deers, trees also inherit genes and mutate, in this case the height, leaving us with a tree population of different heights. Finally, the deers have food and you can see the professional animations I was talking about. 
Even though there was plenty of food and water, the deers were struggling to find whatever they needed, especially water sources, and many of them were dying because of that. I tried to give them memory to remember places where they drank from, but they ended up walking around the lakes and not exploring new areas, so I just fixed the problem by taking back the memory and increasing their field of view. The deers are happy now, but we have one problem. Some of the trees are very tall and the deers can't reach the food. I ran the simulation couple of times and these are the results. At first the deers have lots of food and water, so their population grows. After some time the average height of the tree population increases, as the deers only eat from the trees they can reach, and the remaining tall trees produce even taller ones. Eventually the remaining trees become unreachable for the deers and with the lack of food the deers die out. Now going back to the cheetah and gazelle example, the deers have to evolve to survive in this environment. And I couldn't come up with any other idea than making a gene to control the height of their neck that will allow them to reach taller trees. And the results were pretty strange. Hey, but before showing what the heck happened with the deers and believe me you don't wanna miss that, I just wanna thank everyone for watching my videos and announce that now I have a Patreon page, so if you would like to support this channel and unlock some cool perks, check it out. Alright, back to the video. So I added the gene and ran the simulation one more time. At first nothing strange is going on and the deer population grows as usual. Some of the deers have slightly longer necks because of the new gene, but the average for the whole population remains the same. After some time the short trees disappear because most of the deers were able to reach them and the average height of the tree population increases. It was the time for the deers to evolve and this happened. So it's been around 25 in-game days and I think it should have been enough time for them to evolve. Oh, I can see something. <laughs> what the f*** is going on here? What have I done? Mom, can we have a giraffe? No, we already have a giraffe at home. The giraffe at home. <laughs> Dude, look at this neck. I wonder how they're gonna do push-ups with these necks. <laughs> so basically the deers evolved and became giraffes. But not this one. <laughs> So after running the simulation a couple of times, the deers proved to be pretty efficient at adapting to the environment. As the trees become taller and taller, natural selection does its job and the average neck height of the deer population increases accordingly. At this point it's safe to say we created a population that evolves over time. But we are not going to live their life that easy, right? As usual, we started with making the coyote model and giving it a couple of animations. Just like the deer's coyotes have hunger, thirst and an urge to reproduce, but unlike them, coyotes hunt deers. I tried to make the hunting process less painful, so instead of eating the deers, coyotes will slap them when they reach the attacking distance. <laughs> Oh, wow. I added a flea function to the deers, so when they notice they are being chased by a coyote, they will start running in the opposite direction. Currently the coyotes are faster than deers, so the deers rely on their stamina to survive the attacks. I didn't plan this initially, but the coyotes started attacking in couples or even groups. The first coyote would chase the deer, but eventually fail as the stamina expires. The second one then starts chasing the same deer and successfully catches it, as the deer was already tired. I added another gene to the deers, responsible for the distance of noticing the incoming attack. The higher the distance, the higher the chances to survive, but we'll find that out only by running the simulation. I had a couple of failed attempts where the coyotes were pretty effective with attacks, eventually ending the whole deer population without giving them time to evolve. It took a little time to realize what a terrible mistake they've made before the coyote population died out from lack of food. I started increasing the number of deers, trying to give them more time, and after a couple of more attempts, the deers evolved. The new gene was paying off. With 3 meter necks, the deers were noticing coyotes from further distance and running with even faster speed. But after 30 days of coexisting in the same environment, there was a drastic fall in both populations. The deers were so fast that the coyotes were starving to death. Well, why was the deer population not growing, you might ask? Remember the female deers checking the characteristics of males before accepting or rejecting them? Yep, all the males got rejected and the population eventually died out. I don't know what's the moral of this story, but at least the trees survived and I guess that's a happy ending. Thanks a lot for watching the video and see you in the next one.